I'm so sad. I'm so yeah, sad. This is this is really something. But anyways, welcome everybody to the tenth episode of Head in the Office, or alternatively, ten point five. Ten point five. Ten and a half, baby. And let me tell you, has it been an eventful podcast? I know you may be thinking, what's so eventful about this, Gage and Jeremy? We've only been listening for about maybe twenty seconds, but boy, let me tell you, we've already been recording for about an hour and a half. <laughs> However, the audio fucked up, and now we got to run it back. Yeah, so basically, the audio didn't record via our microphones. It recorded on the computer, so it sounded <laughs> like shit, and we were like, we can't post this, because we got new patrons. Yeah, exactly. We got people We got people who have just put money behind <laughs> us, so we can't really fuck around anymore, and on top of that, our video, like, the recording just stopped. And I just learned that we're recording this on my iPhone, right? You know, I can be a communist, have an iPhone. Well, yeah, so smart. But anyway, we're recording <laughs> this on my iPhone because we don't have a camera because we're, like we said before, down bad for equipment. Mm-hmm. And I just learned that the iPhone 12 will randomly shut off during long videos. So we only had like <laughs> half of the video for last episode. And the audio was just trash. 2007 YouTube, like just starting out quality. Yeah. So. Here we are. It's it's kind of unbelievable <laughs> that, yeah, that we're on the tenth episode literally. and we literally don't know what we're doing. I promise you, <laughs> yeah. if you're a new patron, I promise your faith is not misplaced. <laughs> yeah, please, please, we actually really, really need you so we can get better equipment. Yeah, we started off the previous recording talking about how grateful we are, <laughs> how hard great. we're gonna work. It was so heartfelt. I was like, you guys are really making my day. Help me get up in the morning. Oh, my God. And then we played it back. And we're like, oh, my God. This is uh, this. You cannot listen to this. We said, we said what? Oh, What's my goodness. going on? Okay. Anyway, welcome back to Head in the Office. Exactly. Episode 10 and a half. Um, <laughs> sorry for those technical <laughs> difficulties. You'll obviously not see any of them, but they're definitely there on yeah. our side. But we like so. to be transparent here at yeah. Head in the Office. Yeah. yeah. Uh, welcome back. 10th episode. Um, we've got. Lots of stuff to talk about, including new vaccine mandates from okay. boss man Biden, uh, January 6th commission, and some updates on that. Gage will talk about how much he loves the Satanic Temple. Oh, and, shit. Yeah, and we fully got endorse big it. Satanic Temple news. Uh, we'll talk about statues coming down in Virginia, and then we'll end on some uh, Georgia State politics that also has to do with racism. Yeah, yeah. So lots of fun. But first, uh, make sure to leave a five star review if you like the pod. Uh, become a patron if you want to listen to the episodes early. And we just got our first set of, of five star reviews that we can read off. Ooh. Um, first one from DHUD TV. He says, Two dudes talking about the news, and it's great. You're great, DHUD TV. You're great. Appreciate it very much. And the second one from Jacob Brown, Two guys with witty takes on up to date news. My new favorite podcast. Witty. That's just. You're my new favorite person, Jacob You're Brown. Literally, Jacob Brown. I appreciate you. And I just appreciate being called witty despite making penis jokes like every other episode (laughs) (laughs) last week talking about gas station penis pills 10 percent of our episodes once this is uploaded will be titled with a penis joke maybe 20 (laughs) percent maybe 20 (laughs) percent once this gets updated yeah we'll see we'll see and look if if you want to have your review read on the pod leave a five-star review give us something funny to read prose paragraph you know something silly all you got to do is just leave one yeah we're we're not getting many and we'll get to it we'll get to it uh anyway thanks for supporting the show thanks for tuning in and uh lots to talk about today let's get into it let's get into it part two (laughs) part two (laughs) so first off we've got uh vaccine requirements new ones from boss man biden uh so recently biden has announced that he's going to require businesses with more than 100 employees to mandate vaccines for their employees or provide weekly negative tests and he also said that workers can have uh, paid time off if they are off of work to go get vaccinated which is uh, generally a good thing actually some heat yeah like for yeah. once people actually considering the laborers when trying to make like a pro labor move yeah it's actually a smart decision not an oversight yeah and if if you remember uh, a couple of weeks ago we were talking about how biden mandated vaccines or negative tests for all federal employees yeah now he's changed that regulation so all federal employees must be vaccinated no tests allowed yeah they just gotta get it which is good pretty good because you know Big employer, the federal government right. is. And we also know the U.S. military, everybody there is going to have to get the vaccine, uh, I think, now. 
Yeah. Like, yeah, the mandate's already taking effect. But I have seen some misinformation floating around that the United States Postal Service <laughs> is exempt from this because apparently they supported Biden during the election, which it's like one. How does the USPS really like how how did they support Biden for one? Was it like the postmaster general just being like, yeah, that dude's kind of a piece of shit, though. That's facts. That's a cool title, though. Postmaster. Yeah. Postmaster. Like, that's that's why I call myself, like, shit posting on Twitter. That's us on TikTok. We're the <laughs> Postmasters. We're the Postmasters, <laughs> yeah. We're going to adopt that term for us now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, like, I don't know. Maybe it's that dude. Because, like, how could you not fuck with Biden after Trump literally gutted you so that right. he could try and commit election fraud, but legally, by getting rid of mail-in ballots. But anyway just want to let you know that that is misinformation oh yeah if you false. see it you literally just google usps exempt from a vaccine mandate and all the articles that come up are like this is wrong please do not listen to this also this is not a legal opinion but i'm pretty sure federal agencies are not allowed to endorse candidates that's fact i'm pretty i don't know I if so. they're i don't know what law that would be but i'm pretty sure if i remember correctly they are not allowed to say like i endorse this candidate for office or anything like that so like I, or, they couldn't have supported him it's something like that because federal employees they can't speak on like things related to their sector yeah like i think yeah it's it's crazy you know we're, we're not lawyers up here yeah, we're yeah, just yeah. a bunch of humble podcasts we're just some, two dudes in a in a basement as always yeah uh anyways uh biden has begun basically begging uh large venues to require vaccines for negative tests upon entry or require them patrons to show like uh, a vaccination status mm -hmm. um so this would be things like sports stadiums concerts um dances whatever absolutely needs to happen absolutely yeah yeah no no it, oh my god they are cesspools just yeah. generally especially like college stadiums bro spartan stadium there's a you know big 10 football starting off pretty soon i go to msu spartan stadium was at like capacity for Ugh. the football game on Saturday, like 65,000 people in there. There was only one section of the Sands that wasn't absolutely fucking packed. And it's like once it gets to winter, too, once the U of M game comes around, our biggest mm -hmm. fucking rivalry on October 30th, just peak cold. Oh, and my like, God. It's just going to spread. It's going to spread like wild. It's a super spreader event. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Every weekend. <laughs> I don't want to go home, bro. And it doesn't help that. Side note. All of the motherfuckers on my dorm floor, except for, like, my homies on, like, the other end of the hall, just don't wear their masks in the hall. Do they listen to the pod, though? You know they don't listen to the pod. <laughs> I was going to say, they may get a shout-out right now if you're <laughs> you talking about them. they already don't listen to the pod if yeah. they're out here causing a health hazard for their fellow residents. It's like they don't care that they themselves live on the floor. <laughs> oh, my God. Literally, especially when you look at the communal bathrooms, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Side note, these communal bathrooms, probably like the biggest thing straying me away from just full out communism. <laughs> Wait, why? These motherfuckers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is just, it is a hellhole in there. And we got, you have to have a key to get into the community bathroom, like anyway, like the big one. But there's one, the handicapped bathroom to the side that's always unlocked. And you can tell that everyone on my floor is too lazy, just put the key in to go to the regular bathroom. Mm -hmm. Because the handicapped bathroom is just shit, just everywhere. Oh. Just piss on the floor. It's always, like, clogged, and then the shit will just be on the floor and shit. Bro. And then I go into the regular bathroom, and we don't even get urinals. It's a urinal stall that just, like, doesn't have a door on it, and it's just orange in there, orange and foamy the whole time. And also, it's just gross. And, it, oh, God, Man. these dudes... If we yeah. if we ever reach our socialist utopia, we need private bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> no, private bathrooms, one thing. With communal housing, that's all cool, but everyone needs their own bathroom. This is the one thing that I'm not willing to negotiate. <laughs> yeah, look, y'all are gross. <laughs> I <laughs> need my own bathroom. And not to mention, you don't care if you spread COVID. <laughs> literally. Like, MSU is, like, probably the biggest party school in Michigan. I think so. I think it literally is. Yeah, yeah. so, like, it's going to be disgusting no, there for the it's fall. It's already horrible. Bro. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, the reason... Recent surge in cases, Biden blamed that on, and basically the continuation of the pandemic, he blamed that on the some 80 million Americans who refuse to get vaccinated, which according to Politico is about 25% of those who can. Mm -hmm. um, and it's important to note that when Biden says those who refuse to get vaccinated, he's not talking about like your aunt that can't get vaccinated because of a health condition. Yeah. He's talking about people that straight up refuse to because like they say that masks don't work and there's a microchip in the vaccine or some shit. Yeah, you know, your your average Candace Owens enjoyer. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> your average hog. Your average Candace Owens enjoyer, Tucker Carlson viewer, Stephen Crowder enthusiast. Yeah. And like Those that, that 25 percent 
is are the ones that are perpetuating the pandemic. 25%. I don't know if you already said it. 80 million people. Yeah, 80 million. That is a huge amount of people. Uh huh. Very large quantities of just unvaccinated people roaming around, getting people sick. And it's preventing us from reaching herd immunity, which is the term that we've been talking about yeah. throughout all of the pandemic. Yeah. Also, interesting update on herd immunity. Scientists think that we just can't get there anymore. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Why? Because of unvaccinated people and the fact that we're seeing so many breakthrough cases with Delta as a result of, you know, unvaccinated people, which is also a larger result of capitalism, specifically global Mm -hmm. capitalism and America not releasing the intellectual property for the vaccine. Yeah. Just leaving other countries to literally use ivermectin and shit like that. Yeah. And like we talk about America and our vaccine campaign, mostly just because we live here, but in other places in the world, it's worse. So and not not because they don't want to take the vaccine, but because the state literally does not have the resources to give vaccines to people. And they can afford it because we're charging. Yeah. So. Yeah, we're literally fun. just hoarding it. Yeah, we're just. And, and on top of literally hoarding, that is the proper word to describe this because we are throwing out excess vaccines in places like Georgia. Jesus Christ. So. What, because we can't like keep them cool or something? It's just because, yeah, we can't keep them. They're maybe expiring and people just don't want them. Jesus Christ. Want to take them. I think we threw out like 30,000 vaccines Man, we a couple suck. weeks ago. I know. We are, we're awful. American exceptionalism who? You Where? should be. You should be angry at the unvaccinated people that could go get a vaccine for not doing it. They're oh, literally vaccine. going to make you go back to virtual school. No. no. Please, no. Please, God, no. Literally. And you know what? Throughout the week, uh, the GOP and even some center Democrats have criticized Biden saying like, Vaccine mandates are un-American. Jim Jordan, our favorite uh, seditionist, actually said that as <laughs> yeah. well. Um, but it's like not true. Oh God! No. The first president, George Washington, mandated inoculation for all soldiers in the military. Yeah, he said that uh, a disease outbreak in the military would be worse than losing against the enemy. And pe- they fucking love George Washington. Mm-hmm. Well, they love the idealized yeah. version of George Washington because they don't love. Please don't devolve into a two-party state, George Washington. And they really don't love. Please get your vaccine, George Washington. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. And also the Supreme Court in 1905, Ooh. back in conservative ass 1905. Probably the last time they made a good decision. <laughs> <or> maybe <laughs> said that vaccine mandates were constitutional and that real liberty cannot exist if we're under the constant threat of a pandemic because a minority of the population thinks they're better than a vaccine. Damn. Yeah, that wasn't an exact quote, but that was basically a summary of the, yeah. the opinion that I read from that case. And that was a 7-2 decision. Back in 1905. Yeah. Wow. Like the Supreme Court, always conservative, always makes bad decisions. 7 2 in favor of vaccine mandates because that threatens your actual liberty. And the crazy thing about that is that's actually when vaccines were new. Mm -hmm. Like that's when vaccines as a concept were just a new thing. Mm -hmm. So they literally had no science. And now you have Google Scholar at your fingertips. Yeah. You could go out and you could get the first, the primary sources if you wanted to. <laughs> yeah, no. Like, no. <laughs> like back then, people may have actually had a reason to be skeptical yeah. about vaccines. <laughs> like the United States was still experimenting on these bitches back then. You, you literally experimenting on minorities, experimenting mm-hmm. on black people. That's one thing. And two, the idea of injecting you with a part of the disease to make it so you don't get the disease very new in 1905. Yeah. Very new. Now, Not in 2021, though. Century. A century of research yeah. on this. The greatest minds in the world coming together to get this vaccine to you. And just, okay. I just, I really, I really wish that when people idealize things like George Washington or the Constitution or like originalist readers of the yeah. of the Constitution, that they would just take a second to think about what they're actually saying. Oh, yeah. Because if they were actually ideologically consistent, they would be fine with vaccine mandates. They don't violate your personal liberty. Or even if they do, it is for the purpose of maintaining liberty for everybody in the society. Yeah, yeah. The ben- uh, the what is it? The um, the whole. Uh, the, I'm fucking, I'm fumbling my words. You know what I'm talking about? The no. needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's it's not even that necessarily because the vaccine benefits you as well. Oh yeah, it benefits literally everyone. <laughs> yeah. Especially the people that can't get it because yeah. they're immunocompromised. That was that was the point I was just about to make is that those that literally can't get vaccinated because of their health status are relying on everyone else to get vaccinated. Because if they get COVID, it's going to be very bad for them. It's over. Mm-hmm. Fucking over. Also, getting the vaccine will like protect your grandma. 
Yeah. But Don't instead, people want to conv- want to like complain about the vaccine, say like my body, my choice when that is just completely disanalogous and yeah. then like kill their old family members. Yeah, facts. Abortions, not contagious. Yeah. COVID, very contagious. Yeah. I've seen lots of talk about parental rights in the face of vaccine oh, mandates. No. Um, and I swear to God, this is just like a, a artifact of our rugged individualism and prioritization of the nuclear family above everything else. That's 100%. 100%. And it's also because of Ron DeSantis. Oh, yeah. Everything, all the bad things right now seem to just lead back to this guy and Greg Abbott with his parents' <laughs> bill of rights that he signed into law. Yes. One of the corniest laws to ever be passed. Like, oh, my goodness. Yeah, the parent bill of rights. I mean, what about... If I have like a 15 year old child, what about my bill of rights for him not to get sick? Yeah, what him about, or her to not get what sick? About my right to not die because my kid gave me COVID. Exactly. Crazy, crazy. Yeah. Just yeah. Some, something to chew on. Like, you know? we cannot have real liberty if like that's what we want to achieve. We can't have that if there's a pandemic going on all the time. Oh, and the yeah. Supreme Court agrees with us. That's facts. So, like, I don't want to hear any of this nonsense about like my body, my choice. First of all, it doesn't even map on. We've that talked about this work. before. And also, we want to be free of a pandemic. What about my right to not live in a world that always has a pandemic going on? Yeah. Yeah. But fuck me, I guess. Yeah, I mean, but shit, what do I, I guess know? I'm just a fucking idiot, you know? I guess I'm just a really cute liberal or liberal <laughs> yeah. conservative boy. I guess I'm a I'm a humble podcaster. Yeah. So call me call me really humble on the bottom. <laughs> yeah, call me whatever. super humble. Whatever, whatever. Moving on to our next topic. Okay. Um some far right protests at the Capitol. Again, you may say deja vu. Wow. A la January sixth, maybe? Almost. Wow. Hopefully not, actually. Okay, okay. So the Hill reports that on September 18th, there's going to be a group of 300 to 500 people outside the U.S. Capitol to protest the January 6th commission, which is ironic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the rally is called, and this is really corny, Justice for J6. J- Justice for J6. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. For the date, January 6th. Yeah. Just justice for that. Yeah. That's conservative corniness is even worse than liberal corniness sometimes yeah where to god justice for january 6th (laughs) yes and it looks like um in attendance is going to be some members of far-right extremist groups of course like the proud boys and the oath keepers i feel like that's not much of a surprise yeah who'd have guessed um but the hill reports that and i quote it's not yet clear if any members of congress will be in attendance but some prominent far-right house republicans have offered support and sympathy to the people facing charges for their actions on january 6th some have also cast ashley babbitt who was fatally shot by a capitol police officer as she came close to breaching the house chamber as a martyr bro so that's cool (laughs) It'd have been it'd have been better if they just called it justice for Ashley Babbitt. Like, honestly, <laughs> yeah. oh my god! It probably would have gotten more supporters, low key. Literally, it probably would have got everyone who was at the Capitol just come back. Yeah, and um, Representative Madison Cawthorn wanted to chime in. He said, "Not that guy." Uh, he's called that those arrested for their actions on January sixth are political prisoners and political hostages that are being detained to deter future protests. And here I thought Talk that Republicans what? loved criminal punishment as a deterrent strategy. They love law and order. Right. Except what? when it's used against them. That's then it's political. True. Yeah. <laughs> it's super political for you guys to put people in prison for pro- they- uh, property damage. They love to talk about <laughs> property damage. No, literally. What about all the property damage in these sacred halls of Congress? Mm-hmm. Come on. Yeah, they talk so much about the property damage that happened at less than 7% of Black Lives Matter protests in the summer of 2020. Yeah. But then people literally raid the Capitol, break windows, steal shit, and then steal suddenly it doesn't matter. Document, top secret documents. Suddenly it's all political. Yeah, no. God, it's I hate that. It's political for thee, not for me. Yeah, I lit- I, and I, I really thought that criminal punishment for them was always a deterrent strategy. I thought Thanks. that was the top prioritization of yeah. criminal punishment. What happened to tough on crime? Right. Rudy Giuliani was really tough on crime back in New York. Tough on crime until their supporters are literally fascists. Tough on crime when they're black. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, no, yeah, that's, that's really all it is. And here I was under the impression that if you stormed into the Capitol, you're going to die. Bro, when I'm telling you, when I was little, I literally thought that they had fucking snipers, like, on every building, trained on everybody, and that big-ass, like, turrets would come up if someone ever tried to do something like this. Mm-hmm. And now Child Gage is really just disappointed. Right. The inner child in me is sad that this is just what happens. No, and that probably would have happened if it was, like, a Black Lives Matter protest. <laughs> the they, were, they were saving it. They were probably saving it because they didn't use it on the black people yeah. when they were protesting in, um, like, this time last year. But they did deploy the National Guard on them. Yeah. Even though they didn't want to deploy the National Guard on the Capitol rioters because of quote-unquote 
optics. And that's real. There are actual yeah. like intelligence officials who said, we're actually concerned about the optics of deploying the National Guard on our own citizens. But they've already done it. Yeah. And we've done it before. And we is, have bombed our own civilians before. Yeah. This, yeah. I was just about to get into that. This is in um, absence of the fact that we've bombed our own citizens, see the Tulsa race massacre. This is absence of the fact that the U.S. government has deployed tanks on its own citizens, see Waco, Texas. Yep. And fucking a myriad of other shit. We deployed the National Guard and declared martial law in Virginia during the uh, coal miner strikes. Yeah. I can't, like 1800s, I think. Battle of Blair Mountain. Yes. Was that in Virginia? Ooh. That may be a separate case, but I know the first airstrike we ever did was on our own people on the Battle of Blair Mountain, when I think it was coal miners did some kind of rebellion for, like, basically not being paid. Yeah. And the U.S. military came in and killed them. Yeah. Facts. We literally, I I don't know if that's the case that I'm talking about. I can't exactly remember. It's been a while since I've, like, learned about it. But, yeah, we've declared martial law on our own citizens for striking Uh because they just want to be paid. They want to live. In Oregon, when there was a bunch of uh, Portland, Oregon, when there's a bunch of Black Lives Matter protests happening and, like, there was violence over the summer of 2020, Donald Trump said, we need martial law in Oregon. Yeah. And then he declared unmarked. It was Portland, right? Where unmarked cops came through and kidnapped people. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Yeah, no, that Crazy. was actually insane. They but apparently <laughs> apparently Republicans don't like criminal punishment anymore. Oh, crazy. Because it's for white people. <laughs> Facts. And their supporters. They made a huge fucking stink, what was it, a month and a half ago about uh-huh. like petty theft being decriminalized in California. Yeah. So, you know. But when it's actual just like destroying the fucking Capitol destroying building. Destroying the Capitol. Oh, my matter. God. And just a reminder, when when these people say, like, they support the police, just remember that the attack led to 140 police officers being injured and five police officers dying from, like, being trampled or beaten to death. It's not very back the blue of them. Yeah. I think someone was, like, beaten to death with, like, a pole from a flag, too. Yeah. It, uh, one of them was trampled. Yeah. Or, I, maybe that was just, like, a regular person because a couple, like, rioters also died. I know one, yeah. one dude fucking tased himself to death. <laughs> In the balls. <laughs> Speaking of penis jokes. God, dude, literally. He tased himself in the balls and fucking died. I think he had a heart attack, yeah. And then he also that. got trampled or some shit. Like, yeah. these people literally just rampant fucking, like, rabbit hogs. Yeah, and just to remind you, these people were chanting to hang Mike Pence, and they yeah. were trying to find AOC and Nancy Pelosi. Dudes came through with zip ties, full yeah. out operator gear, bulletproof vest, which, I mean, shit, if I was going to do something like that before I saw what happened on January 6th, I would have a bulletproof vest because, like I said, I thought they actually had security at the nation's capital. Right. Not <laughs> so. that day, though. Not when literally every member of Congress was there and the vice president of the yeah. United States. Yeah. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. And the worst part is that, like, Mike Pence agrees with these people. I know. You know what I mean? Like, other than the fact that they wanted to murder him and they had the gallows outside, yeah. he and Donald Trump literally agree with them and incited or indirectly caused that riot yes. to happen. It was literally just the election being stolen that they disagreed on. Yeah. And that's it. In some ways, Mike Pence was even more of a horrible person than a lot of these people. Yeah. So He was subtle about it. He played politics with it. Exactly. He was like a hardline evangelical, right? Mm-hmm. Like Southern mm-hmm. Baptist, snake charming, chanting type shit. Yeah. God. So you think you think we're gonna get a on September eighteenth? You think we're getting a part two? Oh, I God, hope not. Maybe that shit. I really There's hope no not. There's no way. There's no way they make that same mistake again and don't arm like security. Don't have actual security. Yeah. Yeah. Like I swear to God, that shit was more secure on Fourth of July. You know what I mean? Right. Like oh my goodness. I think I think Capitol Police will actually be ready because like they had reports that some shit was gonna happen on January sixth uh-huh. and they didn't really do anything with it. But like. <laughs> Crazy. We found this information, yeah. so they have to know. It's not like America <laughs> like, doesn't have a history of not doing things with important bits of intelligence. Hey, bro. Maybe sometime 20 years ago, but Maybe I'll it led you... to a 20-year uh, conflict yeah. that we shouldn't have been involved in. I'll let you figure out what event I'm referring to on your own. Yeah, very vague, very vague. Yeah. Um, and in the face of this news coming out about a new, I don't know, riot protest, let's hope it doesn't get bad, um, there's been some news from the January 6th commission. The latest thing they've done has been to move to subpoena communication records from various social media sites through the telecom companies that Uh they're a part of. Um, And one of those members that's getting uh, their documents subpoenaed is Kevin McCarthy. That motherfucker. The Kevin McCarthy minority leader in the House right now, head Republican in the House. Um, But then he also went, uh, Kevin McCarthy, after he learned about this, went on to threaten telecom companies by saying, a Republican majority will not forget which telecom companies comply with the committee's request. Bro, what? Yeah. 
Yeah, would. not very free market of you. Not very free market. Not very small government of you. Nah, nah. I, I thought they loved the free market. What happened to big government overreach as yeah. well? Like, He's basically saying that if if they comply with the committee and give over records of Kevin McCarthy and other members' phone calls, that he's going to punish them when Republicans get the majority again, which they will at yeah, some point. in literally a year, yeah. most likely. And also, it's like, you're a public official. I know everything that the president says is technically public property. Why doesn't that extend to, like, members of Congress? Yeah. Why, why can y'all make phone calls in private like that? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, that's not very representative. If I don't know what you're saying on the phone, how are you representing me? Mm-hmm. There needs to be some transparency there. I feel like their calls, their call records should just be public anyway. Yeah, everything you do. Everything that you do as a congressman should be public. And you shouldn't be able to own stocks either, side note. Oh, 100%. Because you you literally can influence the the entire economy with your legislation. Anyways. And they do. Oh, yeah, and they do. But it's just like, this is... This is literally fascism. This is what fascists do. Yeah. When <laughs> this is what they say communists do. They oh yeah. <laughs> when fascists support the free market and corporations until they go against them and then they will try to ostracize or like destroy those corporations. Uh-huh. This is what Nazis did in Germany. This is literally 100%. what Hitler did. And then conservatives will point to that and be like, "Well, look, they didn't like capitalism. They didn't like the free market. They literally murdered socialists." Yeah, they were socialists, the National Socialist Party. I'm sorry, bro. Literally just Google the Night of the Long Knives. Yeah. That's it. That's all you And also, do. by the way, history note. They used the word socialist because they thought it would get workers on their side, and it did for some it time did. until they started murdering everybody. And then until the 60s or 70s come around and McCarthy, General McCarthy, yeah. gets a big name in the U.S. for McCarthy. Yeah, speaking of McCarthy's. <laughs> oh, literally, literally. Um, anyway, good name. the commission has uh, moved to secure Kevin McCarthy's phone record since he did speak to Trump on January 6th. And I think they've all, they're have they also trying to get somebody else. I can't remember who it was. Um, but like you remember Trump talked to, um, who was it, that guy from Georgia? Kemp? The Secretary of State from Georgia. Because remember, he was trying to pressure him into like switching the votes yes, by like the perfect I amount that he that needed. Call. He said, yeah. "Why don't you just find thirteen thousand and like seven votes? That's <laughs> all you need to do. Just find the vote." That call was bad. If only yeah. we had the pod back then. Oh, I know. There was so much shit popping off every single day it back was in crazy. January. Yeah. Well, now now we're ready. <laughs> now, <laughs> now we're ready. ready for it all to happen. Again. If and when Trump ever tries to steal another election, we're here for it. <laughs> And we'll get the coverage. It won't stop it. We'll put an end to it. Facts. Um, but anyway, the, the commission has the full authority to obtain these records. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a function of the law. They're a congressional committee. They can literally subpoena anything that they want. Like, again, bro, y'all love law and order. I thought. I'll say you love law and order. I thought. Dun, dun. And I think this goes perfectly in line with the same rhetoric they were spewing over the last year saying things along the lines of, we weren't involved in the January 6th attack. It wasn't Republicans. It wasn't Trump supporters. Yeah. It was BLM and Antifa. But don't investigate it. You don't need to. Please do not investigate it. It's just going to be partisan. Even though the one picture that went around of the guy that was at both the Antifa rally and the QAnon rally was a notable QAnon figure. Oh, yeah. like he was counter-protesting. People at the January 6th riot were known white supremacists. Yeah. Like, they were known for being at Trump rallies, yeah. supporting Donald Trump. These were the same people that were outside of, like, ballot counting centers during the election with guns threatening mm-hmm. to break in that then went and broke into the Capitol. It's not crazy to think that they wanted to overturn the election. Yeah. Like, these are the same people that threatened to kill county commissioners for not changing <laughs> the results of the election in places like Arizona, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Georgia, wherever else. Yeah. Like, come on. Like, it's just... It's not even hard to connect. No, it's it's really not. <laughs> Magasans are a, an entirely different breed. Hey, like, bro. y'all thought K, K-pop stands were bad. Yeah. I got news for you. At least they're not trying to overturn the democratic process. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is the worst kind of, like, cultural ideology taken to the extreme. Mm-hmm. It is insane. It's, and look, just, it's sad that it's been allowed to get this far. Yeah, look, 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 look we, we get a lot of hate. Sometimes yeah. for for fucking with conservatives a lot. We've been told that we <laughs> sure, sure. that we dunk on conservatives too much. We're a little too hard. Treat them as too much of a monolith. But come on. Yeah, but like when you look at this, <laughs> like on. your Trump supporters are literally a monolith. And I think it's much more productive for us to dunk on conservatives than it is to just give in to all the infighting with the leftists all yeah. the time. Yeah. Like there's certainly a lot to fight about on the left. How we would implement things. What direction we want to take. If we want to like praise previous socialist projects or communist yeah. projects. But I think. 
at least from my perspective, uh-huh. it's much more productive to just dunk on conservatives that are obviously in the mainstream line of thought uh-huh. than it is to just continue with the infighting. Is it pull people over because I can guarantee you debating whether or not Marxist Leninism, Maoism, or anarchism is the best like utopia does not matter right now. No, because like, we're so sorry, far. Bro, we don't even have free health care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out here drowning in medical debt. Literally. <laughs> and motherfuckers want to talk about whether or not we should have a vanguard party or if we should just have nothing. Just no government. Just all unjust hierarchies gone. Yeah, no, we're so far to the right. Like yeah. it's not even a, that kind of world is not even imaginable at the moment. <laughs> Literally capitalist and, realism. And the thing is that a lot of people fall victim into the conservative mindset because it appeals to our like worst instincts mm. it re- appeals to our most reactionary instincts and our like yeah. most defensive instincts so defending against them is something that if you have a platform or even if you don't you should do as much as you can it is so incredibly easy to become a reactionary yeah that's like default setting like i can guarantee most of you have had reactionary points of view throughout your life and sometimes even today still have reactionary points of view from time to time yeah I, I can say sometimes I see something, I'm like, man, what the fuck? That's kind of weird. And then I just think about it for a minute. And I'm like, oh, actually, no, we're chilling. Yeah. Like, we're, it's easy. It's it's easy to be reactionary. And it's hard to be a, be a super base progressive. You yeah, know? it's true. Super base progressive boy. Speaking of things that Gage is chilling with. <laughs> oh, yeah. <it is. laughs> Speaking of things that it's really easy to be reactionary about. The satanic temple. Exactly. (laughs) We have Satanism as our next topic, but specifically Satanism in the context of reproductive rights in Texas. Yeah. The Satanic Temple is stepping in. (laughs) (laughs) They're stepping in to do what no one else is doing, and they're suing the Texas, like the state of Texas, for their uh, their new six week abortion ban. They're fucking stupid. They're ironically justice bounty hunting law. Ironically, devilish. Hey. Abortion ban. Hey, hey, see what I did there? Okay. Right? And they're also claiming religious exemption from that ban. And right now they're uh, petitioning the FDA, citing the First Amendment's religious exemptions and also the religious ex- uh, also the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, yeah. which is the law that established that Native Americans can use peyote as a part of their practices. Right. So they're using this to get access to the abortion pill for anyone who's like a member of the church, which anyone can be because the satanic temple in of itself, it's a religion. Yeah. It's scheduled, like classified as a religion under the federal government. They have tax exempt IRS status as of 2019. Right. But they're largely an activist group. They do mm-hmm. a lot of they've been doing a lot of like reproductive rights things like in 2020, they stated they are suing the state of Missouri and it's petitioned all the way up to the Supreme Court. They've also attempted to block Amy Coney Barrett from being able to like make a decision on this case because of her known pro-life stances. Oh yeah, like they they really be doing a lot for reproductive rights. It's actually kind of crazy how they're trying to establish oh, yeah. a precedent. This is kind of off topic, but you remember back when Amy Coney Barrett was getting approved by the Senate, and yeah. she just straight up said like, "Yeah, Roe v. Wade was decided wrong." Yes. Or like yeah. she may not have said that in the hearing, but previously she had. And then when she was asked about it, she was like, I can't talk about it. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, what's the hearing for? Anyways, anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she's actually the worst and she oh, shouldn't yeah. have to be on. She shouldn't even be on the court. She anyway, must be a it. member of the satanic temple for how she's acting. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Not, <laughs> fuck, yeah. But um, anyways, so I wanted to talk about the satanic temple like a little bit. I was doing a bunch of research because this had me really interested because colloquially the understanding of satanism is really just been dominated by media and yeah. media figures like witches and shit you know you know what i'm talking about yeah. i'm sure you all are picking TikTok. up what i'm putting down like rituals sacrifices shit like that but no the satanic temple it started in 2013 and they started as a bunch of trolls <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, memers <laughs> yeah they're fucking memeing they decided that they would get together form this organization to stage like a mock protest mm-hmm. for rick scott's the current florida governor Rick Scott's like new thing about how you can like pray in public school now. Mm -hmm. And they said, nice. Now our Satanist kids can pray to (laughs) Satan in the middle of school. This is great, Rick Scott. And it obviously had people pissed off. Hell yeah. And then a couple of years later, they were doing shit with like under the Bush administration. They established some office for like religious. I don't even fucking know. Not like some religious office or something. And they're just trolling them. Until 2019 when they became recognized as an actual religion. That's so cool. That's and praxis. That's praxis. I, I I don't know too much about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I'm just 
three hours of research just reading into like what is a satanic temple and then learning about in addition like the church of satan which yeah. is more so what people think of actual satanism levian satanism and how they're pretty misogynistic and shit like that they actually practice what they call higher and lower magic yeah. so that shit is wild like we don't I, i'm not not endorsing the church of satan I'm not even going to go as far as to endorse the satanic temple like in totality just simply because I don't know. Yeah. I I, I simply, I can't with all the like three hours of minimal research Gage I now did. fully endorses the satanic Yeah, know temple. about all the things that they've ever done. So I'm not going to like put that there. But this abortion shit, that's a power move. Yeah. And in my minimal research, again, I mean, they just they just did it. It's sort of like an anti-religion thing. Yeah, they're contrarians. <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. in there and it's like, why not abuse the system? <laughs> right it abuses us all the time exactly so why not fight back using the same bullshit mm -hmm. like parents will get their kids exempt from vaccines for religious reasons why can't we get exempt from abortions for religious reasons yeah no at schools at universities all over well probably public school too but universities all over the country there's like uh religious exemptions for the covid19 vaccine exactly like you can get a religious exemption and i think that's fine yeah it's like fine. if people are getting i mean it makes sense so it's like why can't satanists at the satanic temple get a quick abortion exemption yeah but i don't I, I i hope they don't use that to get vaccine exemptions <laughs> oh, yeah no 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 me too i'm I, I was reading through their thing because i was reading through like their seven tenets on their homepage. i could not recite them i do not even remember what they were not gonna lie but yeah. it seemed it seemed like kind of all right it was a lot of stuff about just like being a good person but there was one about un uh, the body is unalienable and only like you can decide like what you're going to do with it. And it's like, yeah, that helps with abortion. But I wonder if they're using that to like go against vaccine mandates. But then another one of their tenets says that you will always follow science and be careful to never make sure that you're misrepresenting science for your own like personal biases and beliefs. That sounds like just like <laughs> that sounds like our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was like, wait a minute, what's going on? Whoa, That's what got me so intrigued. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Look, if, if there's any listeners that are like witches from the Satanic Temple, you believe, you know, you do that kind no, of like No, 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 witches, Satanic Temple's not that. They don't oh, do magic Oh, I thought you just shit. said that. No, that's the Church of Satan. Oh, This okay. is why it gets so confusing yeah, and complicated. Yeah. yeah, that's the Church of Satan. That's Levian Satanism. Okay. Well, look, if you are a magic practicer, I wonder if you could like put a hex on the website <laughs> that is for uh, reporting abortions. You know, just make like a voodoo doll of Greg Abbott and poke him with needles or <laughs> something. Him a little bit in the butt. I, look, I don't know how it works. Don't go too crazy with it. <laughs> Hit his G-spot. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. How do we have people paying us, bro? We can make comments like that. <laughs> we love our patrons, though. Yeah, I love, love our patrons. I love you guys. That's crazy that the Satanic Temple is doing more to stop uh, the erosion of abortion access than like the federal government yeah, then other human rights groups and i mean they are in a unique position to do this as a federally recognized religion yeah and by the way they're also a non-theistic religion most i was reading it was so intriguing guys, yeah, yeah right? i can tell most um like satanists denominations of satanism even though there are really no denominations because mm -hmm. each branch of satanism does not recognize other branches as other satanists it's all non-theistic. They don't worship Satan as like a deity. They it's just kind of like they use the iconography yeah. and they use like certain tenets like can't really speak on Levian Satanism and shit like that. But what I've seen about the Satanic Temple seems pretty cool. I just hope they don't also do other bad things that I don't know about. <laughs> yeah, the title of this episode is going to be Gage Fully Endorses, fully endorses yeah, Satanism. The title of this episode, Hail Satan. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I mean... They use, like, satanic iconography to elicit strong emotions from people, but, yeah. like, that's purposeful. Oh, no, like, it's a lot of it's to make fun of Christians. A lot of a lot of good movements have iconography that makes you mad mm -hmm. or, like, makes the, the group they're targeting mad. And, like, that's a good thing. Yeah. Like, it's, it, like, um, ACAP, like, all exactly. cops are bastards. Like, that is a very strong claim that is meant to elicit an emotional reaction mm -hmm. from you, and it works. It makes people exactly. angry. It's that's pretty, the point. Pretty cool. That's the point, to make people more mad. Exactly. Man. They're just they're just memers. <laughs> so, it's just so fucking funny. I wonder if, like, through the court process, they'll get farther than the federal government will. Because I know the Department of Justice is suing Texas as well Ooh, yes. to try to protect abortion access. But I wonder if, like, the Satanic Temple will do a better job because they're, like, a religious organization. Yeah, they already have a case at the Supreme Court, I think, waiting to be decided on. It's They're suing Missouri for other abor abortion um, restrictions. Yeah. Which yeah. is crazy. They've also sued the state of Arkansas 
for religious discrimination because they didn't want to let them put up a um what a billboard oh for reproductive rights because they had like what the, state um, was that arkansas oh yeah that makes sense yeah, they, they sued the state of arkansas for religious discrimination and they put up billboards in i think houston chicago and another city that i can't remember i know houston for sure and two other cities about like reproductive rights shit and it's it's kind of wild. Like if you go to their website, I think on the homepage they've got this thing. It's a year in review of the Satanic Temple fighting for reproductive rights, and it outlines all the cases they've been involved in since like early 2020. That's wild, and it's pretty crazy actually. They're just like fighting for Planned Parenthood. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's that is really crazy. So yeah. That's nice. Just so you know, uh, religious freedom doesn't exist in Arkansas, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Yeah. 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 Because they do a lot of things like highlighting the hypocrisy of a lot of these religious exemptions. Yeah. They're like, okay, we're fighting for religious pluralism then. Yeah. Why can't we be recognized as an actual religion? Because we're anti- not even antithetical to Christianity, but people think we are. Yeah. So, yeah. And I mean, yeah. that even highlights how like after 9-11, there was rampant Islamophobia. Yes. And how even though Islam is a very large religion, like it's not even common comparable in size to the satanic temple much yeah. much bigger much more mainstream I just think in places other than the US. largest religion in the world soon yeah. to overtake christianity as the largest yeah but we demonized or i guess we the state of the yeah. u.s demonized islam as a religion still do and, yeah still do and treated them as like all terrorists or all bad people or all uh-huh. people that wish death upon america yeah but like we we look at the discrimination that like the satanic temple even though they're all memers is facing it's like the same thing Oh, yeah, they're no, fighting literally. for like religious freedom exactly and again exactly. we don't fully endorse i don't really know what they do yeah, i don't like, still, i also don't know th- i only know it's, like within it's the scope of reproductive rights within the last year mind yeah. you <laughs> so. within the within the three hours gauge took this weekend to <laughs> exactly that's, that's all that i know hey it's pretty crazy maybe they're doing more to fight for your rights than texas is that's facts bro better <laughs> better representation <laughs> representation for women than the entire conservative party that's right that's right all right, moving on to some more news about how the South hates your freedoms and just about everything yeah. <laughs> that isn't a, a white person. Um, last Wednesday, the famous statue of uh, Robert E. Lee that was in Richmond, Virginia, kind of in the heart of the city, yeah. was taken down after rulings from the state Supreme Court cleared the way. Um, and as we know, there's a lot of uh, statues of Confederate generals uh-huh. and icons that exist throughout the country, which is why I said, you know, yeah. I hate people that aren't white. Exactly. Anyways, which I um, mean, pretty fast. <laughs> yeah, last year in 2020, Governor Northam of Virginia said that he was going to remove the statue as well as other Confederate statues. But several citizens sued and said that under state law in an 1890 deed, uh, that he can't do that. That is a prohibited mm-hmm. action. But the Virginia Supreme Court said, nah, you got it. Damn, damn. Yeah. What is it? What's with these good Supreme Court decisions no, no. after we spent like. State Supreme Court. Oh, the Virginia okay. Supreme okay. Court. All right, all right, all right. Not I Supreme Court of the United States. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, of course, there's been some conservative outrage around this about how we need to preserve history and that <laughs> Robert E. Lee was a hero and like a war, war general and shit like yeah. that. Which is really funny because dude was actually a terrorist. He was actually a terrorist. And speaking of terrorists, Robert E. Lee, as a terrorist, has done more harm to America, to American people on American soil than Osama bin Laden. Yeah. Just to put it in perspective for you. And one of these things justified a 20-year occupation that resulted in the death of 500,000 civilians that just weren't involved. Yeah. So... Yeah. Just to put that in perspective. And we, we don't put up statues of Osama bin Laden. That exactly. would be crazy. We never would. He was a terrorist. <laughs> exactly. Bad dude. But Robert E. Lee was also a terrorist to the Union back <laughs> during the Civil War. very bad dude. Very racist dude. Yeah. The Confederacy were traitors to the Union that broke off to perpetuate slavery. Yes. Like, they did not want to listen to the mandate of the federal government that slavery was going to go away, so they started a war. They are terrorists. Yeah. They're a bunch of whiny little bitches, too. Yeah. Yeah. And the Civil War was not about states' rights, by the way. Like, oh, that is God. that is yeah. ahistorical that to say that they just wanted argument. to preserve states' rights. No, it was because the North, the North was being so aggressive. Uh, the North was just getting mad that the South was making so much money. <laughs> and the North was mad that the South had all this cheap labor. What, what kind of cheap labor? <laughs> yeah. Like, like, yeah. It's a war of Northern aggression. Yeah. Yeah, literally. <laughs> That's what they want like, you to believe. As a worker in the North, even if you were vehemently racist, it is in your best interest right. to get rid of the institution of slavery because slavery as an institution drives your wages down. Because yeah. why would they pay you and make them move to the South? It's the same argument we have for um, why working class Americans should be pro-immigration and immigrants just becoming full citizens because immigration as it exists right now, quote unquote, illegal immigrants, even though I don't like that term – 
um, they're underpaid. Yeah. They're paid below the federal minimum wage, mm-hmm. which artificially drives down your wages as well within yep. a market scenario. Yep. Crazy. Because capitalists can get cheaper labor. Yes. Same thing with prison labor. This is uh, this isn't even the show notes, but. I saw this take from Larry Elder about reparations. You know what it was? Yes, I know exactly what you're talking <laughs> he said, about. He said that slave owners should be the ones that got reparations because they lost their property. Yes. He's like, hey, if we're going to talk about this illegally, then uh, maybe they need to. They they do need to get reparations. So if we're talking about that, then yeah. And then Candace Owens like, wow, I've uh, I've never thought about it like that, Larry. That's really crazy. And it's like, yes, Candace, because you've never had a thought in your life. <laughs> <laughs> you've never had an original thought. All she does is grift. Literally, no, that's it. I know. I that's know. Now she's got her own show. I mean, us too, but without the oh, grift. True. Without the grift. Hey, bro. Once we blow up. We're just immediately going to shill out to corporations. <laughs> yes. All of our episodes are just ads. That's it. That's, yeah. it. that's it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, but I thought that Larry Elder take was ridiculous. By the way, actually Larry Elder may be elected governor <laughs> of California. Ooh, isn't the recall end of this week? It's on Tuesday. So this it's episode's going to be out after it, uh, after it ends. A no voting way. ends on Tuesday, the 14th. So then when do we know when the next governor Wait. is? I don't know. Whenever the votes are tallied up. <laughs> so probably... Before next pod? Yeah, we'll probably know before next pod. No um, way. If, if the ballots say no, uh, then Gavin Newsom will just stay, yeah. and that'll be a pretty quick process, but it may take longer to tally the votes for all of the candidates that are running for his replacement. So basically, if we know that yes was more than no, Larry Elder's going to be the governor. Probably. He's he's the front runner. That's actually insane. But like, speaking of other conservative takes that I've seen about this situation, Ben Shapiro. I don't know how I got there, but you know how <laughs> if you slide uh, to the right too far on Snapchat, you get to like weird news articles and shit. Yeah, yeah. Ben Shapiro's pops up on mine all the time with his putrid takes, and I clicked on it because it was about the Robert E. Lee statue. And he said, "Okay, okay, so say, <laughs> <laughs> so say that you're a you're a black person and you want to get rid of this statue because it represents racism. That's okay. I can get behind that." But do you know about the time capsule that was, like, in the uh, statue, in the base of it? No. Well, anyway, there was a time capsule in the base of it. And the Virginia governor decided that we were going to put new things in the time capsule, like, when we took out the statue. Yeah. And so that's what Ben was mad about. He's like, okay, we see in this time capsule, they're putting in a mask. This mask represents the muzzling of the American people and the downfall of the American empire. Well, like a mask to protect against COVID? Yeah. We put a COVID mask in there. (sighs) And he said, we also put a Black Lives Matter flag in there. How does that represent how, how does that represent America as a whole? This divisive movement. And then you know what else he got mad about? This was like the most putrid, putrid thing that he said. There's an LGBTQ flag in there, and he said, Why would we want to um represent sexual what's the word? Degeneracy? Yes. Oh my Some, god. It was like it was a what? synonym for it. It wasn't exactly degeneracy, but it was something like that. And I was like, bro, how? How? Was this a recent take from him? Yeah, I saw it like three days ago. That's the shit Ben Shapiro said back in like 2004. Yeah. Like back when he was saying that uh, legal or like, uh, what is it? Equality in marriage shouldn't be a legal thing. Uh-huh. And that it was like a degenerate for you to be homosexual yes. and like against nature. Yes. That's disgusting. Oh my God. No, it was actually oh putrid. Like it, it was worse than the statue itself, Loki. And like the statue hasn't even been destroyed. Like it's being moved to a facility to just be stored in. Yeah. Like it's not being like, thrown put away. Put it in a museum. That's where those type of things right. should be. Right. Like, yeah, yeah. Put it in a museum and then underneath talk about how awful of a human being General <laughs> yes, Robert E. Yes. Lee was. Because like I don't care if he was like some mild mannered person who was like kind yeah. to everyone. Dude. Like slavery. Yeah, keep the graffiti on it and put it in yeah. the museum. Oh yeah, that thing was hella vandalized. Yeah, it, was kinda, it looked cooler. Kind of drippy. I was <laughs> gonna say, like, <laughs> looked cooler with it all the really cool with the graffiti. Yeah, on yeah, it. low key. Uh, anyways, the end of the Civil War, by all intents and purposes, did not mark the end for oppression uh, of people of color in this country, oh, specifically God, no. black people. Yeah, black people have always been treated in this country as the lowest tier of citizens. It's written into the language yeah. of the Constitution. The Thirteenth Amendment that slavery um, will remain legal as if you've committed a crime. Those aren't the exact words, but it's pretty damn similar to yeah. what the Thirteenth Amendment says. Yep, slavery was never abolished in this country; it was rebranded. Slavery was turned into police, forming from what was it, slave hunters or what? Yeah, yeah. yeah the slave, slave patrols, patrols were turned into police yeah. officers, and then the prison system. State Literally penitentiaries. The system. A year after slavery was outlawed, state penitentiaries started popping up. Exactly. And then we also have, what is it, um, crop sharing and shit like that, yeah. which still goes on. Mm-hmm. Like it went on like we it just transferred from, I guess, black people to Mexican immigrants. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. exactly. Of mice and men type beat, you know? Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's not even to mention that most of these statues that popped up uh, to can like to memorialize um, Confederate soldiers happened in the 60s. They happened in the 60s and the 20s during both notable civil rights movements. Exactly. Wow. Like they are symbols happened. of hate and brutality and oppression. Like that's what they're meant to be. Literally to scare black people. Like <laughs> like there's no need for these statues to exist anywhere in the public sphere. So so fucking stupid. And look, you might say that removing statues doesn't necessarily address systemic racism. And like, yeah, okay, fine. That's yeah. like I would agree. It doesn't it's actually fine. do anything about systemic racism. But it's important to remove racist symbols from yeah. public areas because it's it's all about creating a more inclusive country and inclusive environment. Yeah. An ideal that we've never reached. Although individual racism isn't as large of a problem as systemic racism, it's still important to root out individual racism and get rid of things like this yeah. that represent that. Like, yeah. come on now. And, like, there's no reason. There's no reason to keep it up. Like oh, yeah. these, <laughs> he's a terrorist. Like <laughs> if you traitorous seditionist. Yeah, if you really want a statue of a white person from the Civil War, put up a statue of John Brown. Facts, and that's just if you absolutely for some reason need a white person up there, right? Because there are many other black figures we could mm-hmm. put up there that would be a lot better. Yeah, but at least John Brown was a cool dude. Yeah, radical abolitionist up there. Yeah, you remember back when um. Maybe it was when Biden first became president. There was like some weird controversy for like three days about how they might put Harriet Tubman on the twenty dollar bill. That's always been it. That's been a thing for like a couple years now. That's been in the conversation, <laughs> but I hate it because it's like just do it. Like it's who really to, cares? I, I don't even remember the specific outrage that there was from conservatives, but I just know it's so stupid. Oh, I I remember sending you this one Stephen Crowder video about mm-hmm. it you remember what i'm talking about i can't remember the points he made in but i'm sure if you're listening you know of steven was Crowder. that the one where uh at the end of the video he made like the portrait of the farmers that were standing like this but they had like gas masks on and said that like black people are like farming meth or something no, no. oh my god what the fuck was that I that was remember. recently that yeah, was like yeah, yeah. much yeah. more recent and it was literally just racist <laughs> yeah, just he said he racist. said something like Black people are farming. They're planting Hennessy trees. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. I don't know. That, he represents the worst of America. Yeah. Him, yeah. Steven Crowder and Joy. Michael Knowles. Oh, that <laughs> fucking dude. <laughs> Candace Owens, enthusiasts, enthusiasts, Tucker Carlson viewers, all of them. Michael Knowles nuts. <sighs> yeah. And, and to an extent, I feel bad because a lot of people are just like victims of fake media oh, and yeah. like indoctrination from people like Tucker Carlson who have a massive apparatus around him. But like, you know, at, at some point, <laughs> you got to realize that these people are just lying Thanks. to you. When I, when I was 15, no, not even 15, when I was 14, I watched a couple of the Change My Mind videos. Yeah. Because I was like, oh, this is pretty interesting, me thinking I'm a smart centrist when I was 14 years old. Like, wow, this is very interesting. But then you grow up. <laughs> yeah, then you literally stop being a child. Yeah, then you hit puberty and you grow up a little bit and your brain develops and you realize that this guy's a fucking idiot. And then you recognize that the entire world is just awful <laughs> and oppressive awful, and brutal place. and the world is built on literally blood. Yes. Oh my God. And look, look, a lot of people say stop focusing on race as they like talk about race all the time. But even if we want to take that at face value and uh-huh. people say stop focusing on, focusing on race rhetoric that only like deepens the division – the statues like this still exist for the explicit yeah. purpose of making people afraid of the existing social hierarchy. And that's just colorblind ideology. Yeah. Which is just, it's, the colorblind ideology is so bad mm-hmm. because we've said it before, but it ignores the difference in outcome between black and white people. It just ignores everything. I don't see color. Okay. How can you not see these systemic inequities then? Yeah. I've met people that say, oh, it's a class thing. Okay, that lacks intersectionality. Yeah. Well, like, people, why is it a People that say thing? they don't see color, apparently they can't fucking read either. <laughs> oh, you literally don't. <laughs> like, do you not know how to read a graph? Yeah. Like, you can look at the numbers and see that, like, wealth between black families and white families is disparate. Yes. Like, they have never tracked. Like, why is that? Or, like, the ability for a black person to engage in so- upward social mobility is different from that of a white yeah. person, even when you control for everything else. Oh, it's the culture. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shut why? The fuck why up. is that the culture? Why is How'd the culture get like that, even yeah. if that was an issue? Yeah. Which it's really not. Yeah, and then all then they try to do a bunch of mental gymnastics, and apparently, and eventually, we get to the point where they're just like, "We should stop focusing on race." Yeah, Let's I would love focus- to stop focusing on race, literally, but we literally can't because these issues still exist. I would love for those not to be issues. Of course, any sensible person would. Yeah, and as long as these social inequalities exist, 
we are going to justify that arbitrary hierarchy we have set up with our prejudices like racism, sexism, misogyny, uh, all the hate towards LGBTQ. Yeah. Like, rather than address the system as a whole, because people get uncomfortable when you do that, oh. they are going to justify the existence of disparities through their prejudices that it's human nature to do that wouldn't want to make the white people uncomfortable yeah so the only way to do that is with intersectional solutions exactly. that's the only way to solve these issues based intersectional kings you yeah. gotta you gotta solve capitalism you will uh, get, solve, fucking so, get yeah. rid of it <laughs> get rid of capitalism while we also solve the existing social disparities between like men and women yeah. black people and white people and so forth there's no reforming capitalism Just make oh yeah facts no no no, no. There, there is no reforming capitalism at all Just maybe maybe shit. a liberal jeremy from like several years ago would have thought so exactly but i've been fully radicalized maybe, maybe the same gauge 14 year old gauge that thought hey maybe these change my mind videos this is an intellectual debate. Maybe that gauge would have thought there was reformed capitalism. <laughs> Back when no. Steven Crowder was just harassing like college 18 year old yeah. college students. Oh my students. God. I pray that dude comes to my campus one day. <laughs> dude was just harassing like communication majors. Literally, that's the thing too. Like no poli sci majors would go up there. Yeah. And then you have a rampant crowd of like, I don't know, business general majors, just people that don't know whatever they're doing, just conservative hogs around him just harassing people too. Yeah, dude would just pull up on some like biomed student. Yeah, <laughs> just yeah. Harass some, some her. STEM kid that knows yeah. absolutely nothing about politics, but just like hears about the popular things yeah. and is like, yeah, black lives do matter because they do. It's just like 1037 on a Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. You're just trying to get a coffee before your 11 a.m. Yeah. class and you're just getting harassed by some white dude with fucking <laughs> holsters on his shoulders. You're hung over. <laughs> No, yeah, oh literally. My God. You're donezo from the party the night before when you skipped class. Exactly. And no. some dude in holsters is just harassing you. With this whole security team. Hey, hey, do Black Lives Matter, huh? huh? Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh my God, you think Black Lives Matter? Why don't all lives matter, huh? Oh, here's a study that says Black people don't matter. Yeah. Here's, <laughs> here's my thousand page fucking three ring binder. That's yeah. white, by the way. Like, that's true. He whips out a white binder every time. You know, it's just, maybe it's a coincidence, but. The irony is still Bro, went to Staples before. <laughs> exactly. With a fucking binder full of studies harassing these college kids that don't know anything. Yeah. Like, but oh. debate me. Debate me. I, literally. Debate us. Steven you wouldn't Goddard. debate Sam Cedar. True. <laughs> that's true. a little chronically online shit for you <laughs> if you know about that. Anyways. Anyways, you know, that's that probably wraps it up on the Confederate statues, but exactly. bring them all down. I don't want them up. Bring them all down. But we've got more racism coming at you. Facts. If you guys will remember what we call last year, I think around the same time. That, <laughs> that transition was putrid. <laughs> we got more racism coming. At more you. racism coming. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, you remember last year around this time, or no, not around this time, just last year, around the time of the George Floyd and Breonna Taylor things, two huge stories. There's Ahmed Aubrey, which was yeah. also a really big story, but it never hit the same highs that those did. Yeah. And, Jamie, why don't you break down the case for all the listeners that need their memory refreshed? Yeah, so basically, um, and I didn't know this. I, I found this out, actually, when we were doing our first take of the episode. <laughs> yeah. um, I initially thought, because when Ahmed Aubrey was killed, it happened around the same time as George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, they all kind of got lumped in together. I thought it was another case of explicit, like, police just killing yeah, him. cops, like, in and uniform. And apparently, uh, the story was that there was some armed robbery earlier that day, earlier that week, or whatever. And Ahmed, Aub Ahmed Aubrey, not involved whatsoever, just a mm -hmm. dude out on a jog, yeah. was committing the crime of running while black. Yeah, that's was a bad one. Pulled up on by these two dudes and just executed. Yes. And he apparently, I don't know if they were cops or not, or if they were like cops that were cops. off duty. Yeah. But like, I didn't know that before. I thought it was just a case of police pulling up on him. Mm -hmm. It was just regular people. And this somehow became a controversial case that they couldn't solve. Yeah. These dudes pulled up in a white pickup truck with a shotgun. It was a shotgun, Yeah, it was a right? shotgun. Yeah, with the fucking shotgun in their pickup truck and started chasing this black dude down for running. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh my God, he was already running. Then he started chasing him. Then he runs faster. He's running away from me. <laughs> yeah. He's, why is he running away from Bro, me? Why I would is too. running away from me? I would Dude. too. The difference is they wouldn't execute me. Yeah. And then like another neighbor joined in on the chase too. And that's the guy that like filmed, filmed the whole thing. Yeah. And that's how we got the footage, which the footage didn't come out until I think like two weeks after mm -hmm. the story like initially broke. And they just executed this guy in the street. Yeah. Because he fought back because they tried to accost him. Yeah. Which the, I would fight back too. Yeah. In the, I can't remember what website I was looking at, maybe New York Times or something. I was looking at a summary from it that was from yeah. like last year. And he did fight back. Like he was throwing hands. Yeah. Like good. Right. I would too. And I, yeah. I mean, if I was like cornered and someone had a gun in my face, I'd start throwing hands also. Exactly. But then he just got executed in the street for running while black. Uh huh. Because he fit the description, which is such just a tragic, a tragically common occurrence. 
for other minorities and like just minorities in this country. Yeah. You fit the description because people are so fucking racist. They think you all look the same. Yeah. And you're just donezo. Yeah. That's I mean, it. It's, it's disgusting. How is this not just an open and shut case? I don't know. Yeah. And so what the news is about this case, like what the new development is, the former Georgia district attorney, Jackie Johnson, was just indicted on counts of obstructing justice and violation of her oath of office. The oath yeah. to like do no harm and do shit like that. Because apparently the McMichaels are the two like uh, the two dudes that actually were in the pickup truck that yeah. executed yeah, Ahmed yeah. Arbery, right? One of them worked for her in her office. Mm -hmm. That's why I think he might have been a cop or something. I don't know. Details a little rusty. But um, one of them had worked for her. So she originally like excused her office from handling the case because of the conflict of interest, which is good. But it turns out her grubby little mitts never left the case <laughs> as she's now being accused of helping delay the arrests of these guys. Yeah. And I think this is set to go to trial soon. So mm -hmm. we'll be talking about this more. But yeah, she done fucked up. First of all, how did it not go to trial before? I don't know. I don't know why these trials take so long to happen. I don't know. Like, this dude was killed in the street while running at night. Yeah, it's a pretty open and shut like, case. I don't understand, like, how anybody can look at that and be like, oh, yeah, normal. Oh, yeah, yeah. This, uh, oh, this, well, <laughs> they may have had gray. reason to kill him. He was fighting. <laughs> exactly, exactly. What if he did steal even though he was found with nothing on him and he yeah. wasn't carrying anything? Yeah. He was just jogging. And the reason why I thought that it was police that were that killed him, at least yeah. on-duty police officers, was because this has been dragged out so much. Oh, yeah. I thought, like, you know, there's issues with qualified immunity and police are being protected by the state as always, which is obviously abhorrent. But that's why I thought it was dragging out. But now I just learned it's just white dudes. Nah, this is, it was like a citizen's arrest. They tried to do a citizen's arrest, which. A citizen's fucking execution. I don't even like know what the deal is with citizen's arrests, but they're stupid. Yeah. Like that shouldn't be a thing. Like what? You can just deputize yourself to yeah. arrest somebody. Yeah. yeah. Th those are stupid. I don't think anybody really knows what it actually means. Because I've seen so many videos like Karens out there like, oh, this is a citizen's arrest. You can't skate on public property. Man. Yeah, <laughs> exactly exactly but anyway so that's good at least that's a step towards justice in this case and hopefully when this trial rolls around we'll see actual justice and these guys will go to prison actual justice unlike the justice that was supposed to be for brianna taylor yeah even though you can really make the argument it's not hard to make the argument that justice will never be served for this life lost yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Like, what is them doing a stint in, like, state or federal prison really going to do when we know what the prison system just does to people anyway? Mm -hmm. It either, like, reaffirms their shit or somehow some of them can make a change. Yeah. Some of them. And this just reaffirms that the state always operates on the side of white supremacy. Exactly. Like, all forms of oppression, I've been convinced, boil down to white supremacy, capitalism, and the patriarchy. Yeah. And you are oppressed under all of them if you are not, like, a white billionaire rich man yeah 100 like, percent. yeah i and mean like religion yeah that's like a fourth like side note to cover like your lgbt oppression yeah exactly. which also falls under patriarchy too yeah. heteronormativity and shit like that like it's it's just it's disgusting to see stuff like this still happen and i think in the article that i read about um jackie johnson being accused of helping out the mcmichaels uh -huh. she basically openly admitted like yeah i helped them yeah and she was like, yeah, I, I definitely violated the rules. P fucking putrid. Yeah. <laughs> disgusting. It is, it is disgusting. And probably nothing's going to happen to her for real. No, oh, I don't think so, no. I, I think I read that she faces like four years. Yeah. Four years in prison, which, okay, she comes out of it the same person she was before. Because, right. like I said, we don't rehabilitate in prison. Right, there's no real justice. Country. Like, yeah. all, all of our, our entire criminal justice system doesn't function. Yeah, <laughs> we have no concept of what real justice is in yeah. this country. And, and like you said, there's no real justice for someone that is killed. Yeah. But to the extent that we can actually reach justice, we can't even do that. Not really. <laughs> That's facts. Because, like, even the people that killed killed Ahmed Aubrey will just go to jail and probably become repeat offenders and hate crime somebody <laughs> literally, else. Literally. They'll just join a Nazi gang in prison. Right. Come out of it. Do more very bad things. They'll be radicalized the wrong way. <laughs> Maybe if they listen to the pod. Exactly. We can change their lives. <laughs> You know, actually, the pod in prison. Nah, if you're a white supremacist, I don't fuck want, off. Fuck off. I don't want, want you listening you to the pod. Yeah. Literally go away. I don't want you around anybody. No. Put them no. in jail forever. <laughs> Lock them up. Lock yeah, them yeah. up. Damn. Damn. That's a rough one. Exactly. But I think that's it for today's pod, guys. Yes. Yeah, that wraps it up. But before we go, we got some special thanks to dish out. Yeah. Like I said, we got we got some new patrons over the exactly. last week. Exactly. Uh, so we got to give a special thanks to Cricket Scrapbook Layouts, Nikki Nine Lives, TX, Chris the Postman, and Chris my the postman. mom. 
for supporting the show on Patreon. Absolutely. If you want to have your name shouted out with that exclusive list, <sighs> become a patron with our top tier, and you'll have also access to full video options if we can ever get the camera to That's fully right. record. That's Hopefully right. it's recording now. True. true. Um, <laughs> Ooh, you better. <laughs> and we, you also get access to early episodes and any other uh, benefits that we think up. That, that we line. come up with. You know, you know how it goes. And also special thanks to everyone who's been showing love on the TikTok. That's right, yeah. I forgot that we didn't mention this at the beginning because, you know, it's our second second did, go at this We recording. did it the first recording. Yeah, forgot to do this time. Recording. Shout out to everybody showing love on TikTok. Like, yeah, it actually means a lot. And yeah. as well as the patrons, like, that's crazy. Up. That's actually crazy. Y'all gassing us up. Literally. You better be it's, careful. It's a problem. <laughs> it's going to go right to my head. <laughs> my ego just... Psh, exactly. Crazy, we got the best bro. takes. Great. We do. We really do. No, we really appreciate it. Thank you for all the love and support we've been getting. Um, we're about to... We might hit our uh, $100 goal soon. That's insane. So that means you'll get a, a tour of the stew. Oh, God. We'll give you a tour of the stew. <laughs> a tour of my basement. And then maybe we'll be able to uh, purchase a better camera. <laughs> Thanks. I'm, I'm looking into it because this is... Yeah. This situation is something and then we can just have continuous recordings we don't have to stop at every section yeah, if you yeah. if you recognize that's what we were yeah, doing yeah. if you're listening on the patreon if you're watching the full video there's gonna be a quick jump between sections well yeah. you already know that you already yeah, saw but just yeah. know that's because we have to stop the recording so it doesn't randomly yeah. shut off on us anyway thank you all for listening um fuck ronald reagan and have a great day <laughs> have a good one love you <laughs>